So, um, today the title says we will have the summary discussions on the course and the kind of course wrap up uh, presentation, but still there is some activity for Thursday I will come to that end of the lecture it is not uh, uh, yeah. So, let us quickly or we can take our time we have an hour to look at uh, the various aspects of the systems course that we have done and uh, then we can take a look at what we were um, what I thought have I tried to convey and see whether uh, you have also have the same uh, uh, thinking. So, we started with systems in fact, we one of the first question we asked ourselves is what is a system and then we talked about that it is you know uh, system something made up of many interacting components or parts is what we define. Uh, but then immediately almost immediately we have abandoned the system uh, because uh, even though the course title is called system dynamics we only model the problems or issues we never model the system uh, that is the first uh, kind of uh, ironical that we did not really model system, but we took a systems view of things uh, and started focusing on the problems and the issues. So, what we overall what we want to model we want to model the assumed or perceived underlying structure of largely closed world uh, closed loop real world problems. What we mean is we want to find out endogenous explanations for whatever phenomenon we are observing or whatever uh, thing is happening we want to observe uh, we want to incorporate that as part of our model. Uh, sometimes we need to make assumptions and we need to bring out this underlying structure outside it may not be readily apparent. So, we end up having discussions and then making some assumptions creating table functions to actually elicit this model uh, and come kind of build a closed loop model of the uh, entire scenario. We ended up using various structures like delays, material flows, information flow, decision making etcetera were all incorporated. Uh, how did we do systems thinking? These are the some of the components that we went through. Uh, we started dynamic thinking that is graphs over time or behavior over time graphs were constructed and we have been looking at it for the entire semester. Then we started to think about uh, feedback loops using causal loop diagrams and the notion of causation variably affecting variable b and what manner is discussed. Then we try to incorporate it in a stock and flow thinking where accumulations are clearly modeled and then we move to simulation modeling of it. And thinking endogenously, then system is the cause. Like, what is within the system that is driving the behavior? That is the explanation we were uh, trying to seek. Uh, then all the models that we are trying to build. Uh, again, summary: we need to remember these all characterize the system dynamics uh, approach that we have done. So this behavior of time graphs. Again, what does it mean? The behavior of time graphs. What we want to represent is. Uh, they are also known as the dynamic reference modes. So, when you are actually building a new model we might have want to look at what is the behavior of the system over time in the past right what is historical behavior and then what might be the behavior in future also this is helpful in understanding the problem. Uh, but of course, as soon as we start talking about the historical behavior we need to also worry about the time horizon like how far and back we really want to consider. Uh, and when did the problems come out and then that will give an idea of what we want to even uh, actually model. So, for the first part what we call as a reference modes reference reference modes are nothing but behavior over time graphs b o t g means behavior over time graphs. Uh, this is a kind of a explanation if you want to say model a real system or you want to look for something where you feel maybe a systems approach will be useful may not necessarily you are using system dynamics modeling, but you want to do a systems approach in the sense that you want to look for endogenous explanation within the system you want to see how the variables are being interlinked. So, then one of the first thing we might want to look at is this reference modes. And reference modes again x axis is always time, this is some variable of interest, uh, some variable x of uh, interest that we are in looking at. 
and if this behavior is a linear straight line not interesting if it is linearly increasing again not much interesting linearly decreasing not much interesting uh, even if it ex exhibits an exponential growth uh, that also we know it can be modeled as a very kind of simple system uh, if it is exponential decay the underlying structure is quite uh, straightforward that we want to uh, model so it may not or if it is a you know goal seeking model uh, it does not require too much effort but you can actually uh, make the things explicit what will make it interesting is suppose we have a uh, graphs like that where we can see pronounced nonlinear effects nonlinear behavior that is happening something is causing it to increase something is causing short term fluctuations something is causing long term fluctuations in the model uh, something is increasing and decreasing so whenever there is at least some increase or decrease or shift the increase and decrease denote there is a shift in the feedback systems that means at least there is two feedback systems to operating so one is driving growth the other is diminishing growth and there is a shift in those feedback system is happening endogenously what it is now it becomes an interesting question to try and uncover right so one of the first things we want to do is look at some of the key behaviors and see what kind of behavior patterns are we actually seeing so these are called as reference modes because mainly they look at the uh, historical uh, historical behavior so suppose we are here this is the current time typically we would end up drawing couple of patterns in it like what we call as a hope or fear these two trajectories represent what you hope system will behave in future and what you fear the system may actually end up doing in the future um, it can it can be the other way around you might want to hope the system goes down and fear could be that it, it uh, worsens it is just an assumption here that uh, larger is better so hope is higher versus uh, that is just a implicit assumption but it can be other way also increasing can be fear and decreasing can also be a hope that system actually subside ends you know uh, uh, like if it is uh, if it is your whatever if somebody is sick and this is their uh, fever profile you might want it to your hope is system will subside and people become better right so it, it can be that one also so but this kind of we want to see whether if we are able to build a model which reasonably predicts reasonably replicates this behavior then in future we may uh, see what happens in future and have more trust in the model so that's why the reference mode becomes important to see what we want to replicate uh, or behavior or time graphs or bvtgs so one exercise or one thought process for many of you will be in various projects in various fields you may want to look at uh, some of the data that is actually changing over time and see what kind of dynamics are there so most often the system will look highly nonlinear and with short term fluctuations and long term uh, uh, fluctuations okay a few examples about this time horizon so time horizon affects how much we want to see for example uh, given from sherman's book this is looked at a 10 year time horizon of the uh, oil production and consumption the consumption is uh, kind of flat the imports uh, production in lower states are this line here and in alaska fills the gap so the rest of the consumption is uh, handled through imports it's fairly stable with a slight decline in production and uh, slight increase in consumption is flat so production seems import seems to be uh, increasing steadily uh, this is a dollar price per barrel it seems fairly flat for a 10 year horizon however if we increase the time horizon to since kind of uh, oil was discovered you can find a nice rapid exponential growth within the model and see a peak seems to be the first oil crisis hits 1970s and since then it has been kind of falling down 
over time. So, this currently changes our perception of what is the model that we want to have. The previous one may sound like we have enough reserves you can keep going, but here there is a kind of a rapid decline that is being nicely captured in this kind of a time horizon and price huge fluctuations um, especially recently. If you have too large a price spike probably just a simple pulse change the time scale is really high some 5000 years in future then you are just a pulse in pulse change that has happened without affecting anything else. So, it is important to select the time horizon. Then we through various examples we try to do this part of articulating what the problem we wanted to solve. Ideas to what is the issue of the problem, why is it a problem, is it just a symptom or difficulty, uh, what is the purpose of the model that you want to do, then we ended up determining some de boundaries for the model like we told some variables are endogenous, some are exogenous, so let us assume that demand is exogenous for example. So, those are the assumptions are reasonable or not we have to question and then appropriately we drew the boundaries for the model. We identified key variables and concepts and used it in our model. Examples include business model to understand production inventory dynamics of firm, we did that. Model to explore policy to mitigate global warming, we did not work on that, but these are some examples where uh, the scale is completely different. When you look at a business model, you are looking at one uh, company's model, their perspective, their policies, their management structure, their management policies, etcetera, are built in, and how they interact with the consumers is the model. But when you start talking about policy to mitigate global warming, suddenly you are in looking at thinking of a model which talks about the entire world and how various industries does not matter what type of industries or activities happens, how it contributes to this uh, global warming uh, is what we are now interested in. So, the scale, the dynamics, the type of variables all are going to differ. Uh, in how detailed a map you want of territory affects the size of the model that we want, do we want the entire uh, world or you want to look at a small isolated region, is it one business or is it multiple businesses, one city is multiple cities, what is it that we want is, uh, is up to us. From to so know we model with the systems view of things, but we never lost track of the, we do not want to lose track of the problem that we are trying to see like uh, when, uh, uh, but the approach taken to teach it could be that there are descriptions given. So, it felt like the problem is already defined uh, or was not really apparent, but we wanted to see is ok there are some fluctuations in say housing dynamics that happened, we are seeing some population increases and decreases, we are trying to look at models trying to explain that. Uh, so, we want to revolve around it, so we have some variable and say how does this variable affect the next one, and how does that affect the second one etcetera we keep going. So, that is the approach we want to take. So, why it never a system is because then whenever we start then we will end up modeling the entire world, then only model that will ever work is the entire world model that also may be limited then we want a model for the entire universe or whatever. So, it is too, uh, it will become too big too quickly like if you want to model the uh, say uh, uh, agricultural pricing like right now potato is a big issue right. In, uh, some districts in Uttar Pradesh, I do not know if you are following the news. Uh, earlier it was sugar cane, the last year it was tur dal, here there is lot of inventory of tur dals. So, it keeps happening in cycles. So, those are actually called as production uh, commodity cycles, it has been well studied and how it uh, keeps changing because uh, it is just driven by the supply and the demand and because of the lead time things get to accumulate and things like that, uh, which uh, affects in a longer term. So, people looking at short term solutions because election comes more often than people are going to see the cycles. So, people are interested in short term fixes uh, which uh, anyway that is the policy part, but then if you want to model that then we are going to focus on ok let us look at what is the dynamics of the potato inventory that is happening etcetera. We do not want to model every agricultural product with the entire northern belt. We are looking at ok let us model the potato uh, and the inventory of potatoes or so the pricing of potatoes and the money the farmers get within a region say in Uttar Pradesh. So, that is what we mean by focus on a problem. So, the entire system may be slightly bigger than what we want. 
ok. So, to do all this problem articulation we actually used causal loop diagram, what the causal loop diagram actually captured is what is called as a dynamic hypothesis. Uh, in statistics and other fields you must have studied about then hypothesis and testing of hypothesis. Here this is probably the first time we are actually defining something called a dynamic hypothesis, because there is an actual behavior over time that we are capturing and the causal loop diagram does not capture system in static, it captures system as it changes over time and we want to define that causal loop and say this behavior, this diagram we expected to you know uh, cause the underlying dynamics that we are actually seeing. So, that is a hypothesis that we want to then validate using simulation model and verify using simulation models and always you try to seek for this endogenous explanation of the phenomena. Uh, we drew many many such causal loop diagrams as shown here we identified variables we used arrows to say uh, how say birth rate affects rat population plus all causal links had polarities a plus sign indicates uh, as birth rate increases population increases or uh, negative sign indicates that birth rate in death rate increases the population actually comes down the impact is in the opposite direction. Uh, if in a loop all the links are positive then we have positive feedback systems, uh, if odd number of links are negative then it becomes a negative feedback system as shown here birth rate, rat population, population density increases population is increase increases infant mortality infant mortality increases birth rate effective birth rate kind of decreases that becomes a negative feedback system. You can remember try to use noun and noun phrases the action is already captured by the arrows that we want to uh, that we have been using. But going from this to this there is a stock flow diagram usually results in increase in the number of variables in the model at least to match the units we may need to end up uh, uh, having some more variables like for example, in this case if you see here just infant mortality here we are looking at female rat population, sex ratio, normal rat fertility, uh, average lifetime etcetera. So, extra variables do come in, but the stock flow diagrams have been helping us during the simulation. We had only three things stocks, flows, auxiliary variables just three things stocks are usually physical or uh, things we are going to use the information of in decision making. Again uh, if you take a snapshot or a picture of the system what we actually see there is the stocks, if we freeze the system in time whatever is left is the stock and stocks can only be changed to rates. So, do not be in any doubt if there is a stock put an inflow rate and outflow rate you can figure out what the rate names is later or just call it in rate and out rate you can always figure it out what it is. Uh, choose an appropriate time step sometimes large time step cause unnecessary dynamics uh, like time step should be at least one eighth of your uh, smallest delay in the system to um, yeah units are also important please make note and um, see what all uh, because main thing I help of these units is it helps fix a real in reality if you want to measure it how will I measure it. So, these units allows forces us to think in the terms and ensure that a model is valid and we do not end up multiplying things which ought not to be multiplied and stuff like that um, wherever possible. Using these structures causal loop and stock flow models mainly stock flows for most of the semester we looked at various patterns of behavior we looked at exponential growth, goal seeking, S shape, oscillations, growth overshoot, overshoot collapse. Uh, we made simulations understood the underlying stock flow models for each some are simple systems like exponential growth and goal seeking um, combination of that with delays causes oscillations uh, change in the positive and negative feedback system cause S shaped growths um, and more delays within those loops actually causes oscillations within the system. So, these are the things that we had actually seen with various examples. How we learnt it was through various models, first we started with the techniques like for example, we went through various modeling techniques on positive negative feedback systems as shape growths, oscillations, overshoots, delays, non-linearities. If anybody is doubting did we really cover this? We did trust me look at the videos later we have done all this. Uh, then we learn to build lot of models 
we built models by using a lot of examples rather uh, for a given issue we identified variable stocks or flows we did many examples and scenarios uh, we also learned to do model testing debugging sensitive analysis policy analysis um, since some of these things especially policy analysis has to be rooted in a specific problem or issue then we took up a few problems and issues to work with it uh, debugging we took up some small models to work on the debugging issues uh, sensitive analysis refers to small change in the parameter settings or table functions or any of the model assumptions that we want to test to see check the limits of the model that is part we call sensitive analysis in policy analysis about the kind of intervention we are actually thinking of modeling ok I am going to take a policy as for example if it is potato price then do we waive all the farm loans or should I give this minimum price and buy all the potatoes uh, what what should be or should I give the incentive for the next round of crops instead of this say ok I will waive the loans of the next round of seeds or next round of plantation or fertilizer subsidy whatever those kind of decisions those are typically called as policies ok going full circle we are there are various level system thing people have classified starting with unaware shallow awareness deep awareness novice expert and guru unaware you have no idea what system thinking was shallow aware is like you know some of the buzzwords deep awareness is you can read the models and understand the results novice is when you start actually building your own models uh, experts is when you start building your own correct models and uh, looking at uh, open ended systems and trying to get what data and how to go about doing it. Uh, hopefully, many of you are here this novice part you are able to actually build a model look at it uh, at least definitely read models definitely understand what people are saying when they communicate look at the results and see what kind of systems structures may be underlying the phenomenon that we are looking at uh, and then keep practicing to become experts I hope we are all here. So, what next long term next not immediate short term read more on system dynamics if you are interested in this I hope some are the system dynamics modeling by coil business dynamics Terman. there is interesting set of books system zoo by Bosel he has a what you call a zoo of models uh, various scenarios fifth discipline by Senge the fifth discipline is a what can I say uh, it is a more light read there is not heavy equations and stuff, but he tries to present systems thinking more. Uh, so, looking for journal articles system dynamics review is the flagship journal here. So, a lot of system dynamics work get published in this journal and there is also a conference called a system dynamics society conference held every year that here happens in July. So, in the conference website they publish the proceedings and many of them we publish our papers as well as we upload our Winsome models or PowerSim or whatever the model file also. So, that people can download and understand it um, there is a range of articles from teaching to implementing to uh, really new ones, but if you want to move from novice and at least not regress back to a shallow awareness you have to keep working on some SDs incorporated part of a project or something that you may work on try to do some advanced courses in SDs or only way to learn is to do a specific project. So, if we work on some specific project area then we can say can we use SD to look at it and then we learn through that under um, with some guidance. Uh, there are other notions in SD something called as group model building since many of the systems are so large it is difficult for one person to understand it. Uh, we need to go methodically in a as a group how we can actually model the entire system to talk to each other. Uh, we have all done group homework there it is not the same thing at all nothing compared to that we had actually work get a model working and working as a group. So, uh, two different things uh, the various notions of control theoretic methods and optimal control which can be applied here to the models that is something you might want to read up and learn and see how it can be used again as I told you underlying are all differential equations. Uh, so, some of these notions are very useful in identifying our key variables and key um, point of leverage within our SD models. The exploratory modeling analysis another big area which is coming up in the last uh, eight, 3 maybe 5 years this is where machine learning means system dynamics again fantastic opportunity for people to do that 
uh, because system dynamics with so many policy settings and so many sensitive analysis, it can generate rich amount of data. But then machine learning can help us figure out and classify all our system behaviors to figure out where is the leverage points in a very systematic manner. That entire field is called as exploratory modeling and analysis. Uh, if you search for this particular phrase, you may find a select literature uh, on that. Um, yeah, one of my PhD students, Siddharth, has also done some when now he has graduated. Uh, he has done work on this exploratory modeling for uh, supply chain and healthcare and stuff like that. So, uh, his thesis is also there for reading. Interact with the SD community. Um, as I told, there are nice conferences, workshops that is held. Even in India, there are things happening. You might want to do that. So, yeah, that is it. Questions, comments? This is all we had done in the course.